SCP-001 Keter Duty SCP-001 proposals cover all sorts of different concepts, from the first SCP, to what creates anomalies, to the end of the world, and more. Keter Duty was a proposal that described the source of all Keter-class anomalies, all of which were kept in check by other Keter-class anomalies. The one I'll be talking about today is a rewritten version of the original, still concerning the containment of Keter objects, but with its own twist on things. The Keter duty of the title refers to a forced reassignment within the SCP Foundation, publicly seen as a form of punishment. Employees are assigned to Keter duty if they either acquire or awaken anomalous properties that make them unfit for their current duties, with these properties including the manifestation of a chronic anomalous illness, such as lycanthropy, or photonic gastric discharge syndrome, manifestation of spectral phenomena, such as being haunted, sudden expression of traits from anomalous DNA, or awakening of high-level thaumaturgical abilities or psionic capabilities. Keter duty is therefore made out to look like a punishment rather than a promotion in order to discourage individuals from actively acquiring anomalous capabilities. To reinforce the idea that it's a punishment, those assigned to Keter duty are publicly said to be relocating to one of a number of undesirable locations, such as Antarctica, Russia, North Korea, Wisconsin, various waste disposal facilities, or the moon. In actuality, those assigned to Keter duty are taken to Site 100, a non-Euclidean facility that was either constructed or discovered by the Foundation in the early 1900s, although the specifics were purposefully removed from records by the original five overseers. The interior of the site has been excavated from at least one extra-dimensional space, with the primary entrance currently located in the southwestern United States. This will apparently be moving in the near future, of its own accord. The site is divided into ten major sectors. The entrance, administration, archives, six additional containment sectors, and the core sector. The structural elements of each of the containment sectors seems to be concrete and rebar, with flooring and lighting similar to standard Foundation site construction. Each of the containment sectors is several stories tall, in a cylindrical shape, with floors accessible via several glass elevators situated in the open central space. All of the different sectors are connected via anomalous corridors, known as routes. Despite the entire site being underground, most of the routes depict an exterior, natural environment. The route connecting administration and the cognitohazardous, mimetic, and semantic containment sector resembles a flooded forest resting on top of some form of floating mountain. Signs appear when areas are not being observed, directing individuals to the path between the two sectors, and the route is inhabited only by flamingos. The route connecting administration and archives, however, runs through the fifth floor of a tenement building in an unknown city, and contains humanoid individuals that will invite Foundation personnel to partake in recreational activities. The route connecting sapient and conceptual containment acts as the primary power generator for the site, containing hundreds of perpetual motion machines, which generate a constant 8.7 gigawatts of electricity. The route connecting esoteric containment and conceptual containment is a vast field filled with a variety of fruit trees, and it seems to be uncrossable. A year-long expedition was initiated to try and reach the other side of the field, but it ended in failure when one individual expressed a desire to return home, and the entire team suddenly found themselves back in esoteric containment. The routes connecting to the core sector are similarly uncrossable, with the one coming from the archives resembling a volcanic beach, 
with fish appearing to be made of living igneous rock swimming in the waters. The beach terminates in a sheer obsidian wall that extends into the horizon. The route connecting sapient containment and the core appears similar to a fun house of mirrors, with anyone attempting to pass through invariably ending up where they started. The route connecting conceptual containment and the core is a vast, glowing ocean, and due to the nature of the conceptual containment sector, constructing or bringing in a water-faring vessel is highly impractical. Thus, it's only theorized that the core sector actually exists, as it is utterly inaccessible. SCP-001 is a massive facility designed exclusively for the housing of Keter-class objects, which are usually the most difficult type to contain. The different containment sectors each contain either cells or access apertures to areas of localized reality, in which are located various Keter-class anomalies, as well as unique anomalies created for the purpose of containing them. When the Foundation discovers or otherwise learns of a Keter-class anomaly, SCP-001 will begin a judgment process to determine if it's actually worthy of the classification. This process takes place during a period of two weeks to seven months, and if 001 determines it to be worthy of the Keter classification, a new cell will be built, and the anomaly will appear inside of it, along with an appropriate containment anomaly. Proper documentation is created for the containment anomaly as well, including containment procedures, images, and occasionally experiment logs, although individuals mentioned in the logs can recall being involved in the experiments, they can't remember when. If 001 determines that the object is not worthy of Keter classification, it will not create a new cell for it, and the Foundation will generally drop it down to Euclid class for containment elsewhere. What follows is a truncated list of various Keter-class objects, as well as the anomaly created to contain said object. SCP-3984 is the anomaly centered around the end of death phenomenon, in which no living animal, including humans, is capable of dying. This was apparently contained by the creation of SCP-2935, an alternate universe in which practically every organism in existence spontaneously died. It seems that the connection between these two universes cancelled out both effects, allowing things to die once again, as well as reintroducing bacteria and fungi to the alternate universe, returning life to it. SCP-5007 is a collection of malicious entities living in the Bass Strait between Tasmania and Australia, and includes a massive, tentacled entity. This entity was contained by relocating SCP-169, the Leviathan, which the entity began consuming. The entity is currently choking on the Leviathan due to the sudden appearance of large, barbed growths on the Leviathan, which are now holding it in place. SCP-3003 is a planet of humans, entirely controlled by a species of sentient microbes who plan on conquering Earth at some point in the near future. It was contained by sending over SCP-1233 a humanoid entity resembling a space suit, who refers to itself as the Moon Champion, and is capable of superhuman feats. 1233 is currently on the other planet, leading a large-scale rebellion against the parasites alongside the humans that it has managed to free so far. SCP-5501 is an old camera from the 1800s that can function as a sort of two-way portal into the realm of Alagada, a monstrous reality ruled by the Hanged King. This was contained by placing the camera and its photographs into SCP-1983, the farmhouse containing hostile shadow entities that collect human hearts. The Shadow Entities now launch raids into Alagada, and the Alagadan Entities attack the farmhouse in return. 
SCP-3852 is a phenomenon in which an anomalous cadaver manifests in random small communities in the U.S., leading to the lynching of an individual accused of the murder. This was contained by SCP-2547, a pack of around 4,000 dogs, coyotes, foxes, and wolves, led by a male coyote wearing a leather coat and a wooden crucifix, capable of speech. The pack proceeded to surround the community where 3852 manifested, with the leader of the pack holding a trial regarding the alleged murder, acting as the judge, prosecution, and defense simultaneously. This leads to the defense holding the town's water supply hostage if the individual is not found innocent, confounding the jury of humans with circular arguments, or finding itself in contempt of court, leading to a mistrial. SCP-055 is the well-known anti-meme, an object that no one can remember any details about, and is therefore potentially a massive threat. It is contained somehow by introducing it to SCP-579, an object whose details have been entirely expunged from records, with the explanation being that you can't fit square pegs in round holes. This combination was notably brought up in SCP-5000 and SCP-2998. Of course, the Foundation did eventually get into the core sector, a century after the facility's creation or discovery. The core contains one anomaly contained by another, both different 001 proposals. The anomaly being contained is 001 Pikmin a sapient universal force that causes reality to resemble fictional narratives in structure, and to frequently manifest trope-like phenomena and behavior. Essentially, some researchers discovered that their reality is a narrative, and that it can be altered by utilizing various tropes and narrative tricks. This phenomena was contained by 001 Tufto, an expression of the conceptual struggle between pre-modernity and modernity, generally known to most as the Scarlet King. The reason that this containment works is only explained thusly. At the end of everything, we hold on to anything. The red entropy will claim all but the narrative. Someone will tell the story long after we are gone. The king's children say we raise trees to put up monuments to our narcissism. Our topsoil is data, with trees of concrete sprouting from it, bearing fruits of creation, tended to by gardeners calling themselves a bedrock. Royalty lives and dies, but a story is eternal. Basically, they are containing one another, as the Scarlet King can't destroy the concept of a narrative, which means that the SCP universe will always live on. Accompanying these two anomalies was a document containing a picture of a sunset and the caption, We See You, as well as a short bit of text. It reads, I am sorry you will never know peace. There is a flow to the new order and to the other. You can see it too. The balance, the scales, we precariously. This will create a wasteland of a world, ruled by fear and darkness. We cannot allow this organization to lose its... Already they are herding staff into cells once more. Our roots are rotting and dying, but the walls do not breach. You have fallen and wait in containment. Learn from us. It will get worse before it gets better. People will miss the hope, and they will want this world back, in time. If you scream when you are alone, know that you are heard. Let's save some sort of an explanation for the end, because this has really only been half of the proposal, or rather, one version of it. Randomly, when accessing the file, you'll be instead given a different version, with a dark background instead of white. 
This version also describes SCP-001 as a facility designed for the containment of Keter-class anomalies, although the description of its exterior and interior is vague, changing over time and between individuals viewing it. Records of the facility's existence go back to around 730 AD, but it seems to have always possessed modern technology and architecture, regardless of the time period. Rather than the different sectors for housing different types of anomalies, the halls of the entire facility are broken into several hundred unique containment zones, each housing two anomalies which counteract one another. The entrance to each of these zones is marked with symbols of occult significance, and damage to these symbols inevitably leads to upsetting the balance between the two anomalies inside, fixed only by introducing human variables into the zone. If the containment zone isn't properly maintained, one anomaly will operate unchecked, often manifesting as a disruption of local reality surrounding the containment area. This has historically resulted in the contents of the containment zone being loosed out into the world. We're then given another truncated list of some anomalies that are working to contain one another. SCP-1048 is an animate teddy bear that constructs crude animate replicas of itself using various materials, all of which exhibit extreme violence towards humans. It's contained with SCP-1054-RU, an airplane engine that produces a variety of anomalous crows that are all also hostile towards humans and other creatures. The two anomalies essentially are at a constant state of war within their containment cell, and the original 1048 teddy bear hasn't been seen in over a decade due to the massive number of entities within the cell. SCP-106, the old man, is a humanoid entity capable of corroding matter and abducting individuals into a pocket dimension to torture and kill them. It's contained with SCP-3333, a fire lookout tower filled with body-snatching entities. As SCP-106 hunts these entities and tries to take them to its pocket dimension, it inevitably ends up back inside of SCP-3333, resulting in it being trapped indefinitely. This has led to 106's behavior becoming more erratic and agitated, made worse by the constant taunting of the 3333 entities. SCP-231-7 is the sole survivor of a ritual carried out by a cult known as the Children of the Scarlet King, and it's believed that if SCP-231-7 were to give birth, it would bring about the end of the world. It's contained by SCP-4666, a humanoid entity that murders families and abducts children, forcing them to create toys from other children's remains. It seems that SCP-4666 carries out some sort of event every 24 hours on SCP-231-7, collecting toys resulting from the interaction and placing them in its sack, which undulates with the motions of its inhabitants. The interaction has replaced Procedure 110 Montauk, and also has less psychological impact on 231-7. SCP-1739 is an old Dell laptop capable of creating a divergent timeline which is then consumed by an unknown extra-universal entity, a process that is worrisome if someone from the future uses it and the primary timeline we're in suddenly becomes the target. It's contained by SCP-5243, a retro-causal containment breach at Site-43 the events of which must be perfectly reenacted every year to prevent the creation of dead timelines. They have contained one another by using SCP-1739 to create a timeline that's become entangled with SCP-5243, resulting in its consumption and recreation every year. Once again, SCP-579 and SCP-055 contain one another although their order is flipped, and the text reads that you can't fit round pegs in square holes. 
This facility, like the other version, also had a core that went unexplored for many years before finally being entered. Inside, they found two anomalies containing one another, once again both being SCP-001 proposals. The first is listed as codename Locke, which is described as the state of the Earth should the solar singularity occur, causing all organic life to become semi-liquid and immortal, better known as when day breaks. The other is codename Lily, described as the state of the Earth the day before all life extinguishes, where flowers bloom across the majority of the planet and all sapient life becomes aware of the imminent end. There's also a near total halt to all violence during these final hours. The text describing how these two scenarios interact with one another reads, What were we to do, faced with that desperate, clawing perversion of life, twisting all that is precious and dear into those horrid atrocities? We offered up finality, love, acceptance. We gave up our one blissful avenue of escape, our promenade of petals and peace. I do not profess to know what path we now tread down, but I am ashamed to admit that it will not be beautiful. The core also contained a document with a picture of a sunset and the caption, Do you see? The final text reads, I regret to inform you that you will not know reclamation. There is a flow to the new order and to the other. If your eyes were right, you could see it too. The balance, the line we precariously. Naturally, this would allow us to circumvent a majority of possible K-class scenarios through its maintenance. However, understand this, we cannot allow this organization to redevelop a… We return to our core ethos of containment. Our roots are rich with life without a single breach this quarter. Olympia has fallen and her corpse picked clean. I love you. Feed from it. It is all going to be better. We have empathy again and just recently they turned the sun back on. If you're ever alone and you hear the way a pattern screams, bow your head. Their sacrifice will be honored. So first things first, and that's the out of universe explanation for why there's two versions. The original Ketter Duty article needed to be rewritten, and two authors both wanted to perform the task. The two settled instead on performing a form of collaboration in which they'd both write a different version of Keter Duty. The basic concept is the same in each, an ancient, mysterious SCP facility that contains hard to contain anomalies by having each of them counteract another one. The differences are largely in tone, with the light version having more ridiculous interactions between anomalies such as the moon champion wiping out the Mars, or a talking coyote functioning as the court system for an alleged murder. The dark version has generally more horrific and darker anomalies, such as SCP-1048, SCP-106, and SCP-231-7. The ending of each is also different though, with the light version ending on a rather pessimistic note saying that it will get worse before it gets better, and you will never know peace. The ending of the light version also links to the tale The Stars Do Not Wait For You, a story in which an anomaly runs out of control and easily destroys all life on Earth, regardless of the opposition. The dark version ends on a more optimistic note, however, telling us that it is all going to be better. The ending of the dark version links to SCP-1654, a unique article that describes a protocol taking place in the aftermath of a devastating scenario. The protocol makes it sound like the world is in a very bad place, but the Foundation is still fighting. 
There's a lot to interpret between these two versions, both in the text as well as the individual SCPs chosen to be mentioned. I'll leave most of that up to you, but essentially, at some point in the past, there was a reality restructuring event that resulted in a fracturing of reality, meaning that rather than one facility containing Keter class anomalies, there are now two. One reality is more optimistic than the other, and perhaps one will continue to slide towards a breakdown of reality while the other does not. It's a unique SCP created for a unique situation, keeping the same general feel of the original while creating something new in the process. <laughs>